Hi, right, it's Greg Hurrell here with another Vim screencast. And today I want to talk about using Vim to write email um, and specifically plugging it into the Mutt email client um, whose website you can see here on the screen. Um, I think Mutt is in an interesting place right now because if you look here at the summary of the news, um, there was a release back in 2007, nearly 10 years ago um, in the 1.43 series. And then the project went pretty quiet. Um, and if you look here in 2016, there have been a, a number of releases and it seems to kind of have come alive again. Um, so I've been thinking about command line email for a long time because I like using the command line and I like I like Vim, obviously. Um, and so I just recently started investigating this to see if it's viable. Um, and so what I want to do in this screencast is uh, show a couple of ways that you can integrate Mutt with Vim to do your editing in Vim in a kind of comfortable way. Um, and it's a, it's a huge topic, so I'm not going to go into all the aspects because um, some of the aspects are only tangentially related to Vim, uh, but at least some of the, the more concrete things I will go into. Um, and uh, I guess just by way of reflection, um, a couple of advantages that, that Mutt has, um, in addition to allowing you to uh, implement your email workflow around Vim, is that uh, it's quite fast because uh, you know you don't have to access something like the Gmail web client. You can actually download your mail locally. Um, it's written in C, and so basically you're limited only by the speed of your machine, like how fast can it access the file system. Um, it is Vim-like in the sense that a lot of the key bindings are kind of, kind of Vim-influenced, um, and it's pretty configurable, so you can make, make it feel even more like Vim than it feels out of the box. Uh, I think another advantage potentially is security uh, in the sense that, you know, you're not having to evaluate uh, HTML emails using like a browser engine. You're just sitting in the command line reading plain text. Um, and, and it's fairly well isolated in that sense. Um, you can read HTML email, uh, but a lot of the work is delegated to external processes. So you've got a better kind of process isolation model there. And in theory, it, uh, you know, being a smaller code base, it's possible that it could be more secure than a conventional email client. Um, I've actually made a note um, of some other advantages here that I'm just going to remind myself. So we, we talked about having offline access, I think, because uh, you can download all the email locally. Um, we talked about security, composability. Uh, this thing is going to be built out of a bunch of different processes, uh, which you can swap in and out uh, because they communicate via standard channels like IMAP or um, a local mailbox format called Mailder. Um, and related to that point, we have platform independence, which is that this is all open source. And as long as you've got a kind of Unix-like POSIX -y operating system, you can do this on that um, and you're not tied to a concrete platform, which I, I like the idea of, even though I've you know, been a Mac OS user now for you know, 20 years or something. Um, you can hook up pretty powerful filtering to this rig. Uh, I'm specifically using a product called IMAP filter, which allows you to write arbitrary filtering rules um, using Lua. So it's not just declarative. You can do literally anything that you could express um, using a programming language, which means you can filter in any way uh, that you can imagine. I think I already mentioned that it's like Vim. Um, and it's also fun to tinker. Um, however, there are some disadvantages. Uh, one is, as noted here, it's not actually really Vim. Uh, and so there are a bunch of features that you might expect to be there um, because it feels so much like Vim, but they're not actually there. So, you know, you can't click in the UI in any way. Uh, you've got to use the keyboard all the time. Um, there's no notion of focus. So um, in Vim, we're used to having splits. Uh, in Mutt, you have key bindings that operate depending on what kind of mode you're in. And even though the screen might be visually um, made split into panes, like a sidebar um, and uh, like a an index view and a uh, a male view, uh, you can't switch the focus between those views because there isn't really focus. Um, the, the thing is single threaded, which means that you can only do one thing at a time. So you, you kind of have to use Tmux um, and work in splits if you want to be able to do more than one thing at a time, um, which is something that I'll show uh, in a, a screencast. Um, the other thing is if you're running all this filtering on your laptop or your desktop machine, when you look at your email on your phone, it's not going to be filtered. Um, that's a trade-off that works fine for me because I actually don't uh, get that much email that I wouldn't want to see. Um, and my laptop is running almost all the time. I tend not to look at email much on the phone. Um, so it's not ideal, 
but I can certainly live with it. Um, and if I really did care to it, I could actually move the filtering somewhere else, uh, you know, onto a, a machine that's running all the time. Um, and the other final like little disadvantage here is that the Mark community is a bit smaller and less active than the Vim one. Um, so I'm going to dive in now into uh, like a quick demo showing what it looks like to use uh, Mutt in uh, and Vim, and then I'm going to go into a little more detail about some of the specific configuration aspects that you you could do if you wanted to set this up to work well with Vim. Um, so I'm going to cut it here because I want to divide this into little chunks, uh, but uh, I'll be back in a in the next episode with a demo of like how and why you might want to use this.